Hey, Corey again with some more information about that basic resume. Remember, the resume should always be a living document. You should always be adding to it. As new things come along that you think are important for the resume, make sure they get on there because I promise you, you will forget critical information. Don't ever get to that point. We've talked about your contact information. We've talked about the summary that you're going to tailor to a specific job posting. Now we're going to talk about your education section. And that may seem like it should be really simple simply listing your education. But here's something I see time and again. Know what degree you're working toward. Is it a Bachelor of Arts? Is it a Bachelor of Science? What is the actual name of your major? Understand that when you put inaccurate information about your education, you are not conveying a good thing to a potential employer. So I recommend spell out Bachelor of Science. Obviously, if you're working towards a Bachelor of Arts, you should not spell science. You should spell arts. But for our Bachelor of Science students, make sure you use that. Use the correct name of your major. It's absolutely critical that it be the exact one. If you have a minor or a concentration, that should be added on there as well. Those things must be precise. What about your graduation year? Some people will actually place on there graduation expected May 2019. That's okay, but why don't you just simply say May 2019? We all expect you to graduate on time, but things happen. So it's better to put May 2019, keep it simple. If you need to change that, you can. What else? How about your GPA? Some students are reluctant to put that. I read things all the time. You should, you should not. If it's less than a 3.0, absolutely don't. If it's higher than a 3.5, absolutely should. It's really your call. But understand that most employers are looking for that baseline 3.0. And if they don't see it on the resume, they're gonna ask you about it anyway, more than likely. But you might, wanna, you might wanna take that chance if you don't have a good GPA. Hopefully you do. What else should you put on there? Well, drop high school. I am amazed when I see students who are college juniors and seniors that are still listing their high school. Now, there are some reasons I understand where you might want to include that. You're going back home to the same area and you know that that will have some recognition. You attended a high school that's got a national or even an international stature and you want that alumni network. That's fine. I'm not going to hold that against you. But I do believe almost across the board, it's not necessary to keep high school on there after your freshman year of college. Once you're a sophomore, it's overcome by events and hopefully you've added a lot more activities and skills and experience that are gonna build on that. What else? Anything else you need to put on there? How about relevant coursework? I am also amazed at the students that do not include things that are going to be important for an employer. Now, relevant coursework should always be related to what you're trying to do. So if you're applying for a specific job and they're looking for specific skills related to some coursework you've taken, by all means, include that on your resume. But try to limit that. Don't list every class you've ever had. If you're listing more than 10, that's too many. I would say less than or equal to 10 courses should be on your resume. Bottom line is the education section needs to convey to the employer that you meet the critical needs, the basic needs that they're looking for as an entry level employee, or later on, if you've achieved a, a, a graduate degree, that you have those requisite education skills. These things are important in resume 1.0 and education is equally important as you continue on listing the skills and experience and education that you have in your resume. More to come.